and see if, um, I'm going to go see if we have more of these as well, okay? So if you want to take one, if you, if you want a button, if you're not a button person, that's fine as well. Be right back. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Can I have some of your buttons? Oh, please. <laughs> Bless your heart. Thank you. Yeah, you did, but there are more people than the. Thanks. Yep. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Hopefully now we'll have enough buttons for everybody that wants them. Do you want to take one and pass it that way as well? All right. I also have a, um, we're doing like the housekeeping things at the beginning, can you tell? Um, I also have a little sign-up sheet here. Um, this, what this will commit you to, just so I know everybody freaks out having to sign up for something, um, but you don't have to sign up. What, what it will do is you'll be informed of further events or meetings or anything like that involved with the, with the Women's Center. Most specifically, um, if, you, if you are wanting to be a part of the men's outreach program for um, the people in the room, then you, know, you can indicate that as well. Um, so if you're interested in hearing more about the Women's Center through email and stuff like that, uh, you may sign up, but in no way are obligated to just because you're here. I guess because um, I'm a graduate student who works at the Women's Center. My name is Andrea Connor, and um, my main area is doing educational programs, which you're taking part in today, which is very exciting. Um, but I also do um, a whole bunch more, whether that be in residence halls or in clubs or classes or things like that. So um, I have a few of these brochures that we can look at later if you're interested. Okay? Great. So we're here to talk about gender communication, right? Good. <laughs> Everyone here seems to be like that. That's good. Um, since it is a, a program on communication, that's mostly what we'll be doing. There will be no fancy PowerPoint presentation or anything like that, except for this fancy technology. I feel kind of <sighs> excited about that. Um, so what, mostly what we'll be doing is communicating, and I'll need you all to you know, give me some feedback, and we'll be talking about lots of different things. And since you're all so well versed in language and gender, I'm sure it'll be an enlightening discussion, and we can learn something from each other. I think that would be great. So um, let's see. I just need one more thing out of my purse, and then we'll begin. Is anyone else chilly in here? Is it just me? me okay I have a tendency to get the sniffles so I had to get a Kleenex here all right before we start I think you all know it's probably really important to clarify the difference between gender and sex right we all talked about this yet sort of anyway um, the way the way I define it so that when we have this conversation you know what you know where I'm coming from and what I mean um, I feel, I, I am, well, on behalf of the Women's Center, we feel <laughs> that gender um, is enacted. It's not something that's inherent or just something that's natural or biological within you. Um, we feel that then sex is a biological thing, that that's a biological, like, uh, body that you're assigned based on, like, your physical evidence. You know what I'm saying? So I'm sure you've all realized that this, but um, as we talk about gender communication today, it's going to be a very fluid thing because uh, gender, we believe, is totally uh, constructed by both yourself and society. So, um, And communication, as we talk about communication, um, we, uh, I feel that um, communication, it's, it's a human behavior, and it's something that's essential uh, to all of us <laughs> as we go through our lives. And I think what my goal for the program today is, is to help us all, including myself, learn how to become um, a better communicator with people of my own gender and of other genders as well. Um, and I hope for, hopefully we can help you all learn a little bit more today, too. Um, so the first big question, are men really from Mars and women from Venus? What do you think? No, no, no. Why not? I didn't get here in a spaceship. Because <laughs> you didn't get here in a spaceship. Oh, I worry if you did. How about? What, does anyone else have an opinion on that one? Well, the implication of that. Um, I was thinking about that this morning. Given 
that there's a basic fundamental biological difference between the sexes, mm -hmm, true. and uh, you have this range of possible genders that the sexes can fit into, okay, ultimately, whatever your sex or your gender, you're a human being. Mm -hmm. And that is the overriding dominant factor for me and for a lot of you know, men and women that I know. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, sex can play a role, sure. a, a very large sure. role, and it, in some issues it's going to be more up to sex, and other issues it's going to be more up to gender. Mm -hmm. But the way I feel in most issues, it's mostly up to being human. Yeah. So. I agree with that, and as we and as we talk about that, I mean, one thing that I have here in my notes is that research just generally kind of throughout the years has really sh shown us that of course there are differences but really men and women are more alike than we give ourselves credit for I think um, I think we complicate issues sometimes by thinking good lord I'm so different from that person I just I can't we can't communicate we can't get on the same page and really we're a lot more alike than than um, we t we tend to think does anybody have any ideas of why like we have tended to view men and women as as opposites for so long This is that interactive part, right, where <laughs> someone like, <laughs> you know, jumps out there with something, right? <laughs> well, the, uh, the quote, masters of society, whoever they really are, you yeah. never know. Yeah. These multi-billionaire guys that, that plot, plot out the future for 20 to 50 years to come and uh, decide who will live and who will die. Uh, being mostly male, the way I see it, uh, and... Uh, resulting from a history of male hegemonical culture want people to think that way sure to sure. keep women oppressed more than anything yeah. else so mostly it's been something that kind of people have just sort of been telling us over the years that we're so we're so different we're opposites anybody else i don't think that anyone's actively saying i want women to be oppressed <laughs> yeah not many people would get away with that really uh, i think some people do i think some people do well, okay yeah but a minority there's, there's a always minority. someone that's that's gonna be like you know i don't want you know it, it's america has to be white male and that's it you know there's always going to be these the, the fringe people mm -hmm. but I, I don't think the main mainstream people don't don't actively at least think that way right. but they don't try to do that I agree with that and then sometimes a scary side note to that is there are some people who feel that way but do it in very subtle kind of non-noticeable or unnoticeable I think would be the way to say it ways you know and there are there are maybe more than we think but they aren't you know being all blatant about it you know so sometimes that's something that you know watch out for um, what, what kinds of, as we start our discussion on um, communication, have you all experienced some problems when, when men and women communicate? Or can we toss out some examples as to uh, some, some, some problems that men and women just have in general when we communicate with each other? Maybe anyone has an example, or maybe you're all just so well-versed in communicating with the other gender that you're just so good at it. I've heard this example a lot of times. I don't know if it happens a lot to me, but um, a lot of times a man will say something such mm -hmm. as, I'm hungry, and then a lot of times women tend to infer a lot from that, such yeah. as, oh, I should have made dinner, or um, <laughs> he wants no, to go no. out to eat right now, or whatever. Exactly. Instead of just hearing, oh, his stomach tells him he's hungry. Yeah. That's that's definitely that's definitely true. Um, something that we were you know going to talk about. This is a great segue. Is that um, in conversations um, it tends you know a pattern that tends to happen. Not something that we should stick to rigidly or anything, but something that tends to happen is that um, in conversation men t tend to make more statements than questions. <coughs> and so when you know when women are trying to you know keep the conversation going per se then they take those statements and then try to make it something more than just a statement. Um, because women tend to maybe ask more questions in pursuit of, 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 a, of a response for lots of different reasons that I'm sure we can go into. But um, So that's definitely one of them, that um, a simple statement or something could, could be taken as something completely different. That's, that's a good example. Anything else? 
No, I just, it just occurred to me an example out of my life that I'm sure there are many, but the, the one I can think of, I was, I was standing in front of the door of a building smoking a cigarette and inside's the meeting of this, this organization I belong to. This woman member walks up and it's right before we're supposed to start and I'm smoking outside the door and I'm the only one visible and she goes, is, is the door locked? And it was just, you know, a total assumption on her part. And it's a particular peeve with me that, you know, when people assume things. And I, 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 said, I said something smart like, you know, well, why don't you, you know, pull on the handle and see, you know? It's like, <laughs> but um, um, that, that's just an illustration of a, of a communication problem I had with someone. And I chose to aggravate it rather than to. <laughs> be, be, because of because of that peeve that I have with people making it because right. the doors weren't locked. I right. was just I was, I was smoking my last cigarette before mm -hmm. we started. Yeah. I think that's a good example of, you know, how assumptions can hinder our you know, hinder ourselves. And there are lots of different types of assumptions. Things like you've mentioned and assumptions as far as um, whether whether the person that you're speaking to is heterosexual or whether the person that you're speaking to is um, married or whether the person that you're speaking to is, um, well, those are just some examples. But um, we, we tend to define um, our relationships with others through this communication, through talking with each other. That has so much to do with um, our relationships with other people. And those of you who may be in an intimate relationship right now, that might be the great, like a great part of your relationship or a great source of frustration for you all. Um, I know it's happened to me. Um, and a big thing that we can talk about um, today is how gender stereotypes influence the way that communication works. Um, how the things that, you know, that we've maybe been taught or the things that seem to be true, how those um, affect how we communicate with um, other people. So, um, as we talk about gender stereotypes, we can talk about things like things that tend to happen, like we were talking about women tend to kind of ask more questions. Um, probably, you know, in my opinion, you know, if they're trying to pursue the conversation a little bit more because, you know, they'd like it to extend a little further. Um, and, and, uh, and men, like we mentioned, d tend to do a little bit more um, of, of statement-oriented uh, conversation. And so that, even that in its simplicity is something that we can remember as we work with each other and talk with each other. Um, let's see. Do you think, uh, do you think that a female's perception of the world is shaped in some degree by the words that we use to think and to talk about, um, the, like the environment or the office or things like that? I got some head nods a little bit. Yeah? Can you give me an example? Sure. Um, basically, to put it a little bit simpler, um, I, I'm basically starting to talk about gender biases in the language, like in our speech with, with each other. Um, and I'm just wondering if you, if you all think um, that the way a woman maybe looks at the world is through the, uh, women and men actually, the way they look at the world is through kind of the speech and the language that we use with each other. Um, for example, um, the biggest example I think is the generic he. Um, when someone says he, do you mean he meaning males or do you mean he meaning like just some generic person that we don't know the gender of? Um, source of a huge amount of miscommunication with people um, in writing as well. Um, because that's one of the things where uh, if you're going to use a generic he for all genders, it really needs to be specified so that we all know what's going on, you know, so we know what's, so that's a big example of it. Do, do you all feel affected by that? Um, do, you, do you feel, um, men and women, do you feel like um, you know, the things that exist in our English language you know, hinder our communication sometimes? That example, um, I went to a meeting where someone gave a terrific talk using the generic sheet. Oh, yeah? Only she didn't say she was using it generically in oh. the end. So it was hilarious, and she did it on purpose, but it really pointed out yeah. you know, the assumptions we make. That's true. Yeah. yeah, that's true. <laughs> when we both are friends, I mean, friends, if you, um, okay, let's say that you have a bunch of people, uh -huh. and the majority, let's say that there are 20 females and one male, uh -huh. we're going to have, if we want to talk about a bunch of people, we'll have to use the he. Oh, wow. Because there is one. Right. 
it's always a majority. Yeah. Wow, that's very interesting. And as I was saying in class, when we want to say we don't have the usual like, eat. That's yeah, right. that's okay. So, um, so we always say you bring. Yeah. You know, it's always you. Really, mm -hmm. really. So every, everything kind of has this implicit gender of maleness. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Some feminists try to change it into um, she reigns. You know, like, right. Women would go out and say she reigns, whereas men would go out and say he reigns. You know. Right. Does that do? Uh, do men understand what they're doing when they say that? Like, does that make? I mean, does the like, like when when a woman says in French, um, you know, she reigns, and then to a man, does he is, is he we like? We don't use it. Some uh, people would like to change it, but. We would look like three. Yeah, it's like, what are you talking <laughs> about? She reigns. That's not how it goes. Doesn't make sense at all. Yeah, yeah. And kind of in the same situation that you were talking about, you know, if you use a she as a generic, it's like, I'm sorry, you're talking about women or, or what? That's a very, very interesting point on both accounts. That happens in Spanish, too. I, I haven't taken Spanish for like four years. I took, took it in high school, but, you know, there are a lot of masculine things. Like, why is that masculine? I'm not really sure. But everything has a gender. Some things are feminine, too. But mm -hmm. um, that, that group thing, I think, exists as well. Like, if there's, there's one guy, then it's all, <laughs> you know, it's all masculine. So any more examples right now? You'll get another chance. I want to hold you back. All right. Um, I'm going to give some more examples about um, how our language sometimes hinders us in our conversation. And as I go into this, I want to be fully um, upfront with you all and let you know that when we try to be inclusive in our speech, we're going to hear from a lot of people about it. We're going to hear that we're being PC, that we're just being stupid or whatever. That comes from all sorts of, of people. And I think that. Um, being PC is something that unfortunately has been uh, grabbed onto and has been termed as a very negative action, politically correct. And so, sorry, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I heard a whisper, I'm like, oh yes, being politically correct. And I think that, um, you know, for, you know, now that it's happened, there's not a whole lot to do about it, but being politically correct now is, seems, is seen as by a lot of people, whether, you know, no matter what politics they, they believe in, as, as a negative thing, and that's unfortunate. Um, but we're going to talk about, for a little while, ways to be inclusive. And if you want to think of it as ways to be politically correct, that's fine. Um, but just know that you know, you'll, you'll get a lot of flack about it. I know that I do. Um, but to me, being inclusive and having everyone that, I'm, that I speak to feel like I'm talking with them is more important than having somebody call me PC as a derogatory thing. Who cares? It's more important to me that I reach everyone that, I, that I'm speaking with. So keep that in mind as we learn a little bit more about how we can, um, about how we can um, you know, address our uh, maybe sexist, biased language or the other things that we can uh, kind of say in its, in, instead. But um, one thing, as you all know, women t uh, tend to, in, in the past, and it's getting a little better, um, tend to be defined um, in their relationship to a man. Um, you hear you hear a lot of, and not near so much anymore. But you all hear a lot of, you know, the wife of Earl Jones, or Mrs. Tom Smith, or something like that, which just bugs the crap out of me because it's just to me it seems like she's not then her own person. You know what I'm saying? Um, doesn't happen near so much anymore. It's that's really starting to get better. And you know, then you know, the, if you say Mrs. Sally Smith, normally, I mean, normally you have at least her name in there, which is is good. Um, we talked about the generic he, and there's a lot of other things like that, like manning the office, um, manpower, man-made, things like that. Um, and it's really, really hard. I mean, I find myself uh, doing that all the time, and I'm like, oh, geez, you know, I, maybe women made that lake. I don't know. Um, and so, you know, I've started to try to do things like um, human-made, something like that, or um, you know, or just like turning it around and just saying a couple more words, like you know, people made that lake, you know, as opposed to just man-made, although it's quicker and it's going to take a lot for us to kind of address what we're saying. Um, I think it's worth it in the end. Um, how about this whole deal about um, sexuality? Like a woman who is uh, sexual or promiscuous has, uh, promiscuous is one of them, um, has all these uh, kind of negative sounding um, words about her, but if maybe if a man is more sexually promiscuous, maybe those, those terms are a little bit um, uh, more powerful. You know what I'm talking about? Anyone have an example? 
you're like, oh, I do, but I don't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just refer to both of them as female and male sluts. I'm yeah, sorry. well, that's good. No, that's good. I, I mean, that's, you know, if somebody's, you know, over the edge, I mean, yeah, that's good. Because, see, you've made, you've made the uh, alteration to be like, you know what, they're both doing the same thing. One of them's female, one of them's male, and that's, that's great. Yay for you. That's what I would say to that. But you hear it a lot, you know. Guys are a player, you know. They're getting some, woo, you know. And women are sluts. They're whores, whatever. They're, you know, much more derogatory terms. So um, the inequality exists there as well. But good job for everyone that's, you know, is making adjustments to that. Um, let's see. Um, some, some of the meanings of words have changed due to cultural change. Um, like some of the things that I mentioned, we don't do um, Mrs. Tom Smith as much as we used to. Also, we don't talk as much about like crones or spinsters or old maids as much. Sometimes old maids a little bit, but when we talk about women who you know progress into their older years without getting married, um, a lot of times they're lesbian. You know, if they you know if they if they haven't gotten married, that's automatic or something, um, which is unfortunate. But I think that it's that's that's one thing that's getting better. I think that women who are older who haven't gotten married don't don't get called you know as much you know things as they used to one of, one of the things like from my personal experience that bothers me most of anything and I just I, I this is me being um, getting to use this time to, to, to like be angry about this one that drives me crazy you'll watch those late night talk shows like Leno and Letterman they all do this um, when they're in when they're um, uh, not interviewing what do I want to say? Uh, bringing out their guests, you know. Um, the men, every single time, I've never ever ever heard a difference. The men are um, addressed as the very funny, the very talented Martin Short or whatever, whoever we're talking about here. The very funny, the very talented David Hasselhoff or something about their, you know, talent. And every single time a woman is brought out, no matter what she does, whether she's a singer, she's an actor, she's a comedian, she's whatever. Um, she's always the very beautiful, the very lovely Ms. Gwyneth Paltrow or whatever. Always. Next time you watch that, watch a show like that, watch that because every single time the, the man who's brought out is like, they, they always do those little the very this, the very that <laughs> in front of it, but for men it's always something about their career or their job or the very talented <coughs> and the very flexible Mr. Flexo man or whatever. You know, like it's always something <laughs> about their talent and then for women, no matter what they do, it's always about how they look. So. Check that out next time you watch one of those. And if you see one that doesn't do that, please let me know because I, I as of yet, literally have not heard um, one that hasn't been done that way. So, um, so now that I'm done with my little rampage about talk show intros, um, I think it's important that we all know that you know gender stereotypes can hurt men and women. And although most of the examples I've most recently given are things that you know are sort of against women or whatever, I think it's important, especially for the men in the room, to know that I'm, I truly feel that it harms all of us. You know, um, missing communication with each other. You know, when you say man or mankind, do you mean like males or do you mean females? And even if women say that, I think it's hard to understand, um, you know, what exactly is being meant. So all of us. Um, can be harmed by double meanings with words um, and not understanding specifically what it is that the person is talking about. Um, we, hear, we hear a lot about, um, you know, that women, you know, or, or men have trouble with intimacy. They have trouble um, with communicating. Um, but, the, but the truth and the reality is, is that when men recognize that there's a need for intimacy in the relationship, they try just as hard as women do to meet that demand. The reality is that I think if we could get rid of that stigma that men are the strong silent type and you know, they don't like to communicate, I think that, that maybe you all have experienced that that's just really not always the case. You know, it's just really not. Um, and uh, you know, both, both men and women don't like um, or have trouble with communicating communicating like when a relationship is just getting started you know that we both have trouble with that kind of thing it's all nervous and awkward and that kind of thing um, and both men and women try to avoid conflict at all costs like you might you know you might hear that well men you know are more aggressive and they're more um, kind of out there in their communication but the reality is is that um, both of us you know both genders um, try to avoid conflict you know um, 
if possible. You know, we all, you know, will confront it if, if need be, but um, we also hear that um, maybe men aren't as supportive as women or things like that, but that's also just a bunch of bull um, because um, although, you know, although women um, by their nature and through research has shown that they might be more in tune to needs of others, if men realize it as well, they're just as apt to um, give social support or give family support to people that they know. So that's, that's something to remember as well. The, the gender stereotypes that we hear about men being you know, strong and silent and not wanting to communicate, not wanting to give support, it's just not true. And for those of you that are in the room who are taking a gender in language, or language and gender or whatever <coughs> course, whatever it's called, um, you all probably realize that. And so um, that, that's one thing that's really important for us to understand. Um, all right. So now that I've given those kinds of examples, who's, who's got questions or who's aching to talk about some certain example that they've had in their life that they want to talk about? Yeah, like. Well, one thing that uh, surfaced earlier in the course was that different societies have uh, different trends in respect to linguistic usage. Uh, between the sexes uh, due to environmental reasons. Okay. And uh, so uh, maybe, uh, uh, what should I say, that uh, our teacher brought up a, a, an example of some tribes from, I think it was New Guinea, that uh, reversed typical procedure uh, when it comes to dressing mm -hmm. or uh, uh, w what is expected of people as far as aggression, yeah. things like that, especially verbal aggression, uh, other things. Uh, and some of these societies uh, uh, were just uh, either different or, or even the opposite from, from say, American uh, yeah. norms. Yeah. And what it made me think is that perhaps the sex difference is really very minute. And what uh, causes our society, American society, or European society, or any given society to be the way it is, is this environment. And that in the nature or nurture controversy, mm -hmm. uh, except in cases of severe physical handicap, you know, uh, what's most important is, is the nurture, not the nature. Yeah, yeah. So. You bring up an excellent point, and, and you know, has, it's prodded me to point out that our conversation today that I've led is, has been unfortunately very um, European-American centered, like very, um, you know, European background, living in America kind of, of, of thing, and I'm glad that you guys brought up your example from France, um, and the example that you just brought up as well. In other cultures, this could be a completely different story, completely different. Um, so that's, that's definitely something to remember. Thank you. Well. Go ahead. Well, no, no, you, I, I talked too much. <laughs> Go ahead. This is um, kind of going back to the using he. Yeah, kind of thing. Um, I've noticed that I use like the phrase, how are you guys doing? Yeah. And I use it all the time. And I work a lot with um, doing outreach with groups of girls. And yeah, it's kind of ridiculous for me to say, yeah. how are you guys doing when it's a group of girls? Yeah. So I've noticed that in my own language. And I've gone to, how are you ladies doing? Or mm -hmm. if I give a tour and it's a mom and a dad and a kid, I say, how are you folks doing or something instead yeah. of just using the, you guys. That's great. I do that as well. And you, y'all, I was just about to say, you all might have noticed that I have started saying you all a lot. And although it's not very grammatically correct and I'm not from the South, even though it sounds like it because I say you all all the time, I, I too have realized that I say you guys all the time. Partially, I, I think, as a compensation for like just being sick of like getting, you know, backlash of just being a group of women. You know what I mean? And so I just, you guys was always so convenient. Um, and I, I, too, have noticed that I say that quite a bit. That's one of the kind of things down the line that we discover that, that, that we're saying. Do you all realize you do that, too? Oh, boy. 
Oh boy. Yeah, it's everywhere. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Jeez Louise, what am I gonna do? Yeah, and it's it's like why you never hear someone say, Oh girl. <sighs> I totally missed my class. You know, no, you, you don't hear that at all. Very interesting how for so long, you know, the, the language was, was focused on, on men. Yeah. Even even you you hear the the you know, the most hardcore feminist saying that. It's like, that's so funny to hear that coming from your mouth, you know? But I don't know what I don't know what else to say. We can all just, I mean, we can all just come up with our own new expressions to say, who was it, like Bart Simpson? Didn't he have like a cowabunga or something? Let me say something new, whatever. <laughs> Did I see a hand over here? No? Someone was just stretching, I guess. Yeah? I'll, I have a couple of handouts that we can talk about, and then um, maybe that can spark some more um, great discussion from you all. Um, what should I start with here? I've got some, some guidelines to, to non-sexist language. Let's start this with this one. Um, 